What's up, machine learning sorcerers? It's Phil from Neuralnet.ai. You're watching Module 4 of our free reinforcement learning course. In this module, we're going to cover some theory of dynamic programming, and then I'll leave the implementation up to you as an exercise, with my solution to follow in the next module. If you haven't seen the first three modules, go ahead and click on the link now to get caught up so this module makes more sense. Of course, each module in this course builds on the others, so to get the most out of it, you want to see the whole thing. We've learned that reinforcement learning often boils down to solving the Bellman equation, which tells us the agent's estimate of the value of a particular state given its policy. There are many schemes to solve the Bellman equation, and today we're going to focus on dynamic programming. Dynamic programming is most useful when we know the state transition probabilities for our environment, or we have a full model, in other words. Knowing these allows us to solve the Bellman equation explicitly through an iterative process. That iterative process is composed of two parts, policy evaluation, or the prediction problem, and the policy improvement, the control problem. Let's tackle the prediction problem first. Since we know the environment dynamics, the Bellman equation is really a system of equations with the size of the set being equal to the number of states in the environment. There's one unknown for each state, which is the value of the Bellman equation itself. So we have n equations with n unknowns, which is a solvable problem. If we take advantage of the recursive nature of the Bellman equation, it becomes an update rule. So at each step k, we have the following equation. This relates each update of the Bellman equation to its prior estimate. So all we have to do is start out with some estimate of the Bellman equation for each state of the environment. This estimate is arbitrary and it gets refined over time by plugging in the relevant quantities for the state transition probabilities and the agent's policy. This is called iterative policy evaluation. Something to note here, in dynamic programming, we never actually have to play the game to solve the Bellman equation. The point of playing the game is to learn the state transition probabilities and rewards, but in dynamic programming, we take those as given. We're really just solving a set of equations to find the estimate of the value function for a particular policy. To implement iterative policy evaluation in code, you'd want to execute the following pseudocode, which I've taken from Sutton and Bardo's textbook on the topic. I'm not trying to trivialize the importance of iterative policy evaluation, though. Knowing the value of the policy is the critical first step in improving the policy. Of course, policy improvement is tantamount to learning, since it's the policy that dictates the overall reward of the agent. To improve the policy, we use a pretty simple process. For any given state, the policy prescribes some action. For that state, just take some different action and look up the appropriate state transition probabilities and rewards. Recalculate the value function and compare it to the original value. If the new value is better, then you can update your policy with the better action. If it's worse, then just continue iterating. In practice, the differences, or the delta, between the new and old policies can be a small number. Over time, this delta will converge asymptotically towards zero, so we'll need some stability criterion. Once a new policy hasn't changed very much, we can be sure that it's stable and optimal, and we can exit out of the loop. This process of alternating between policy evaluation and improvement is called policy iteration, and it's given by the following pseudocode. For simple environments with a reasonable number of states, policy iteration is pretty fast. Each sweep of the state space is quick, and the number of sweeps it takes to converge on an optimal policy isn't large, so it's good enough, at least for government work. But for large state spaces, we can run into some significant limitations. Rather than give up, we have to wonder if we can take advantage of the fact that the approach to an optimal policy is asymptotic. Instead of waiting for ultimate stability, why can't we just exit early? In fact, we can, and the special case of stopping after a single step of policy evaluation is called value iteration. Just to be clear, by single sweep, I mean a single iteration of all the states in the state space. The algorithm to do this looks like the following. Now that we've discussed the general concepts of policy evaluation, iteration, and value iteration, we're ready to implement these in code. Let's use the grid world from our series on writing your own environments. If you haven't seen those videos, check them out first. 
pull the code from my GitHub and extend it with procedural implementations of the policy evaluation, policy improvement, and value iteration algorithms. Don't worry, I'm going to timestamp the point in the video where I show the algorithms so you don't have to hunt around the video. If you run into a problem, just drop a comment down below and I'll swoop in to help. In the next module, we're going to go over my solution for you to compare. Then we'll move on from dynamic programming into Monte Carlo methods, some more programming exercises, and then on to temporal difference learning. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now so you can get notified of the next module in the free reinforcement learning course. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.